and welcome to this video. I must apologize, I got a bit carried away last time with all this process about the uh, the messenger RNA and things, but um, I guess you could have always skipped it if you got bored with it. But what basically we looked at was that RNA normally comes from our very own DNA, goes into the cells and makes the very proteins that comprise the cells and therefore comprise us. And all these messenger RNA vaccines are doing is utilising the body's own process, giving it the instructions to make the antigen to a spike protein, which the immune system will recognise as being foreign. And then the, the RNA will simply go away in, in a few days. It's not going to go into the DNA. It's nothing to worry about. So that was what that was about, basically. <laughs> anyway, coming on to today's topic, or this topic I want to look at now, um, mainstream media has been lagging behind all the way through. Now, for weeks, months probably on this channel, we've been talking about this. Hands, space, face, of course, is essential. But we also need to ventilate as well. And this is one of our reliable sayings <laughs> that we're fond of. So hands, face, space, and ventilate. And for the first time today, at Sunday, for the first time today, I've just seen something about this on mainstream media. So um, given that mainstream media have uh, deigned to catch up to date, uh, come up to date after a few months, I thought we'd look at it. And it does give some pretty interesting uh, insights, actually. So, you know, we've got this winter to get through and we need the hands hygiene. We need the face with a mask covering. We need the space. And places are getting this right. Shops are getting this right. The hygiene's good. The space is good. The mask wearing in a lot of shops now is pretty well 100%. But the ventilation is still appalling in many places. So let's look at this. And, and, you know, the idea is if we keep going on about it long enough, the penny might drop or start getting through to more people. And every person we get through to with this message, we're going to reduce transmission. You know, every, everyone helps. So delighted to see that mainstream media has actually latched onto this at last. So the BBC have run this article, Five Ways to Avoid Catching the Virus Indoors. So welcome to the party, BBC. Nice of you to come along. Glad you came eventually. Right. First point, if it's stuffy, walk away. Now, they've latched up with Dr. David Davis, who is technical director of the Chartered Institute of Building Services Engineers. So this is a man who should know what he's talking about. And he says this direct quote, if you've got someone who is infected in a building and you're bringing in plenty of outside air, you're diluting whatever infectious material they're giving off. The likelihood of getting the infection depends on viral load. And we're pretty sure <clears throat> that how sick you get. If you do catch the SARS coronavirus 2 virus and develop COVID-19, how sick you get depends on the viral load. That's one of the main reasons we wear masks. We wear masks in case we're infected to stop infecting other people. But we also wear masks so that I get a much lower viral load. Therefore, I'm less likely to get sick and therefore less likely to die if I, if I get this infection. It is that, it is that simple. Um, so so that's what that, this, uh, this is what Dr. Davis says. You're reducing the risk of other people becoming infected. And he's right, but you're also reducing... If you do get sick, you're reducing how sick you're going to get. Very likely, we believe this. The, the, I have to qualify this because it's not. there's no trials on this yet, but the, it's, it's so likely that this is the case. Um, of course, to do this, we'd have to deliberately infect people to find out using experiments. So there you go. If it's stuffy walk away, Dr. Davis, director of the Chartered Institute of Building Services Engineers. Right, now, next one, look up at the air conditioning. Now this applies to air conditioning, we'll do air conditioning then mentioned heating. So split air conditioners, the most common type of air conditioners. I haven't got a picture of one, but these are just the ones that kind of bolt onto the wall. Now the point is with these is, um, they just recirculate the air that's in the room. So they take the air that's in the room, they cool it and they blow it out again. The best air conditioners, what they do is they're bolted to a hole on, on the wall 
and then the fresh air comes comes in from the outside. But a lot of the, these split air conditioners aren't like that. So if someone's got the virus in the room, what happens is they'll give out the virus. This will go into the air conditioning. It'll be cooled, which will prolong the life of the virus. Uh, it will reduce the humidity, which will also probably make the virus more transmissible. And it will circulate it and blow it around the entire room, potentially infect everyone. And the same also applies with, um, with heating. Um, Heating, again, um, it's much the same as an air conditioner. It's, it's taking air from the room, heating it, and then spreading it around the room. And the thing about a heater is it's going to set up convection currents that are going to flow around the room. And the convection currents are going to help the circulation of the virus as well. So both bad. Uh, if, there's been a good, if there has been a good supply of outside air, very likely few of people to become infected, if any. Now, this is talking about uh, a study in China where one person infected nine people through one of these split uh, air conditioning systems. But also, particularly this time of year, applies to heating. As we shut the doors, we have less through draft. We have convection currents from the heating, more viral spread. Now, the next thing on this BBC article, there's five things. What was that? So that was the, um, if it's stuffy walk away, look up at the air conditioning was the second one. So this is the third one. This is the third point the article is making. Ask about the uh, fresh air ratio. And this is from Professor Kath Noakes, Leeds University, environmental panel of uh, scientific advisory group for emergencies. But this article did say she's speaking in a personal capacity. So she's not speaking for SAGE, but we assume she is well informed. Uh, having 100% outside air or close to 100% is a good thing. The more fresh air, the less you're likely, the, the, the less you're running the risk of recirculating the virus through the building. Now, when I was young, um, buildings were built with windows that open. Now, very often, buildings do not have windows that open because health and safety people don't want people falling out of them. Um, which isn't usually too much of a problem in the, in the UK and indeed in the United States, thankfully. Um, but nevertheless, this is, this is what they do. So what happens is the air is taken in uh, via some sort of ducting system, normally goes to the roof where it's uh, recirculated and then it goes back in again. Now, those things on the roof, what they can do is you can set them apparently to, to have no new air which is, is good because it means you've warmed the air in the building and you're recirculating the warm air so you save on heating bills. But of course you're getting less fresh air in. Therefore you're recirculating the virus. What we should be doing is, is the air should go to the roof of the building and then all that air should be discharged and all the new air that comes in, 100% of that should be fresh air and there shouldn't be any recirculation. So the more recirculation, the more we're recirculating the virus. But of course that costs more because you have to heat it or in some way you have to cool it. So that, that's what they're talking about there, this um, fresh air ratio. And we want, we want it to be about 100%. But we believe many buildings and shops are not doing that because it costs them more to heat it. So that's the third point, fresh air ratio. See, if you're opening the window, there's no ambiguity about that. But anyway, anyway ne ne next point, fourth, fourth point. Uh, get the office manager to check if there to check if there's virus in the filters. Now this is a remarkably good point. Now in South Korea, there was one building on the eleventh floor. One person infected ninety others, just on one floor. Now, what we would do here is we would take the viral filters, and the viral filters. So suppose this 11th floor of the building, whatever it is in Korea, <clears throat> if they check the viral filters and they found out there was virus on the filter, can you see that means someone on that floor has got the virus? Therefore, you could send them all home till you tested them all or test them all or do something about it. At least you'd know about it. You wouldn't be fighting an unseen enemy. So um, if we could test air filters in, in, in multiple occupancy buildings, for the presence of the virus, if it was there, we would know we had a problem and we would need to take action on that. Now we don't know because filters aren't being tested. So that's a very good idea. We could develop a simple test that tests filters in these multiple occupancy 
buildings and uh, we could uh, test everyone inside. It would alert us to the fact that there is an infected person shedding the virus inside. Now that, so the fifth point was watch out for drafts, an infected person sitting by an open window in a ventilation source. So the idea here is that a person could be asymptomatically or pre-symptomatically infected and if they're sitting by where the air is blowing in or they're sitting by an open window then the air would be coming from the open window drafting through with the air currents with the pressure changes picking up their virus and blowing it onto everyone else that's a possibility but having said that it's good to open windows because it dilutes the viral load so probably here in most cases an infected person sitting by an open window you can get this downwind effect but the dilution effect should outweigh the risk because of the importance of viral dilution but um it just shows we need to think about the sort of the way the air currents are flowing but basically if you can open the windows and it's a bit colder then put up with that just come to work in a in a thermal vest and we just have to put up with being a bit cooler for the time being so i thought that was useful um at last, the mainstream media have got onto this message, hands, face, space, ventilate. And probably in terms of viral spread, each one of these is equally important. I mean, the, the hands one, the, the face space is particularly important, the ventilate one uh, particularly important, I would think. Um, but I just thought that was useful. Finally, mainstream media has got onto it. And remember, do share this, share this one around, because the more this gets around, because although people are getting this bit right, most places are still not getting the ventilation right. So if it's stuffy, walk away. Look up at the air conditioning or the heater. Ask about the fresh air ratio. Get the office manager to check if there's virus in the filters, indicating there's someone infected in the building. And uh, drafts generally are good, but if you can have infected people uh, downwind of the drafts, if, if they're there at all, then that would be that would be a good thing. So. Let's get that message out. Let's make that the project of this video. Let's get everyone saying this, hands, face, space, ventilate. I mean, the, 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 these reliable sayings do work. I mean, you know, you heard us saying naughty but nice. You know, Salman Rushdie wrote that about 40 years ago. You know, if, if you get one of these catchy sayings, then, then they do work. Now, the hands, face, space is good. But if we add hands, face, space, ventilate, then that would be even better. Okay, um, thank you for watching that video.